Hey everybody, it's Jay Woods here with a special Smash Bros. Wii U preview. I'll be running a video answering one viewer question per day about the upcoming Smash Bros. for Wii U up until the game's release. Today's question we'll be answering is all of your controller questions. There have been a ton of people requesting information with the many different ways that you can control Smash Bros. for Wii U, so I'm going to do my best to show you guys how it all goes down. Let's start with arguably the most anticipated way to control on the Wii U, the GameCube Controller Adapter. The GameCube Controller Adapter will be available alongside the launch of the Wii U Smash Bros. game for $19.99 US dollars. It's compatible with all types of GameCube controllers, old and new, and can even work with the wireless Waybird controller by putting the receiver in one of its four slots. The adapter is connected and powered to the Wii U through the use of two USB ports, which can be connected either in the front or the back of the Wii U. You can even connect two adapters to the front and back of the Wii U to have eight GameCube controller slots open at once, but this is a bit trickier to pull off if you're using one of the four USB slots for something like an external hard drive. Alongside the adapter, Nintendo is releasing a new limited edition GameCube controller with the Smash Bros. Insignia on it for $29.99. There's nothing that feels different about the controller itself compared to the originals. They feel just like a carbon copy of the ones I've been using in my childhood. The only difference is that the new GameCube controller has about an extra foot of cord length, helpful if you have a setup far away from the television. This length actually appears identical to the Japanese GameCube controllers, which you can see from here with the white cable when compared to my silver US GameCube controller on the left. In terms of Smash gameplay, the GameCube controller still feels like the definitive choice. Having the C-Stick easily accessible for quick Smash attacks is a must, and you can even hold the C-Stick in a direction and charge it over time. I've been pretty open to the fact that I love the feel of the GameCube controller, and it's just great to have it back. The only downside is that this adapter is not compatible with Wii titles when played on the Wii U, such as with Mario Kart Wii. My secret hope is that we could get GameCube Virtual Console titles compatible with the adapter, but only time will tell. I've also had many ask if you can use this controller adapter on your PC as a controller. You can connect it, but as far as I can tell, the drivers don't allow you to actually use the controller on your PC. I wouldn't be surprised if a fan-made driver made this possible, though. Moving on to other controllers, my second favorite choice would be the Wii U Pro Controller. It still has a solid fit and worked fine for all my Smash Bros needs. My only complaint, if I have any, is that it feels kind of strange transitioning to this controller from the GameCube one because the second stick you use for Smashes is above the buttons instead of below. Similar to the Pro Controller layout is the Wii U GamePad. It's another workable option, although I've found that the wider controller is still less comfortable than the Pro Controller. On the upside, you can play Smash Bros. Wii U straight off of the screen, giving you a semi-portable option if someone's using your main TV screen while still looking bigger and nicer than the normally portable Smash Bros. 3DS. Speaking of the 3DS, this game also allows you to connect a 3DS system with Smash Bros. 4 3DS. You can either use this system to transfer custom characters over, or as another controller. The 3DS controller works perfectly with no lag, but I wouldn't recommend it over any of the other options we've talked about already. However, if you want to play this with the game's new 8-player Smash, but only have a limited amount of controllers, this is still a viable way to let more people play. And finally, there's the old Wiimotes, which are still Wii U compatible with the sensor bar that's included with the system. You can play with the plain remote horizontally, but your button options are extremely limited. This is by far the worst way to play Smash Bros in my opinion. Slightly better, but still not to my liking, is playing the game with the Wiimote connected to the Nunchuck add-on. It gives you a few more options, but it still feels inferior to the other controllers. I had a friend in college who swore by playing this way though, so if that's what you like, the option is still around. In the end, it's great to have so many options for control in this game, either for playing by yourself or helping you put a controller in eight different hands for the game's expanded mode. And speaking of which, I found it surprising that Nintendo's list of eight player controllers listed that you can use up to seven or more of several different controller types. Really? You can use more than four of a single type of controller? The only major Nintendo controller that I own more than four of is the original Wiimote, so I went ahead and tested five Wiimotes at once. And yeah, it works! We'll talk about eight player mode in more detail once I've had more time to test it. That's all for today's preview video, and special thanks to Nintendo for allowing me to share this Smash Bros. Wii U footage with you in advance. Is there a Smash Bros. Wii U question that you'd like answered? You can leave a comment below or tweet me at TheJWits, and you just might show up in the next video. Once the next video is up, you can click right here to check it out. Also, if you want alerts right when my new videos are out, you can click here to subscribe to the channel. I'll be running one of these videos every day until the launch of Super Smash Bros. Wii U on November 21st, so I'll see you next time. And no, these aren't the only videos I'm going to be making over the next two weeks. They're just a little bonus.